Hello everyone, what's up, what's new, and what's bracken? I'm Richard Scherzer, and today I'm going to be reviewing the movie that celebrates Walt Disney's centennial, Wish. Now, I know I'm late to the party again. I'm just trying to catch up on the reviews and the most popular movies that were then. I know this is now. I, I, I'll definitely catch up later. But anyway, let's get into it. So, Wish is about a young 17-year-old girl named Asha who is, lives in a small town in the Mediterranean Sea called Rosa. And they live, she and her friends and family live in this town with this King Magnifico, voiced by Chris Pine, who controls the town using his magic and he gives gifts or specifically wishes to people once a year or so. And uh, he's looking for a successor. Uh, hopefully f trying to find that in Asha, but that really doesn't work out because the, the two obviously butt heads and apparently Magnifico, if you watch the film, has a bit of an ego problem. Uh, now, that actually sounds like a pretty good premise. And what sounds even more interesting is that when Asha wishes upon a star, the star actually comes to life, unlike so many other Disney films where they just wish upon a star and it just stands there in the sky. And this is one of those, it, it's, it, honestly, it's better than the last two movies I reviewed, like the Marvels and Barbie, but not that much. Um, I do admire the voice casting. I do admire the beautiful CGI and the designs and the beautiful landscapes. I do. But realizing that this is Disney's centennial celebration movie, it doesn't really feel like anything of a celebration. It, it really doesn't. It feels more like one of those Disney, like a Disney placeholder to say that they did this on this day and uh, they didn't uh, do anything else. Like they did this on this day and gave us a movie where there were a bunch of Easter eggs and references to previous Disney movies. And it kind of felt somewhat vapid and dull because I mean the way they hyped up Magnifico they, I was told they were gonna be. He was gonna be the best Disney villain in years. He wasn't. Honestly, he was more of a laughable villain. Uh, so when I think best Disney villain in years, I think he he better be just as good or better than I don't know Jafar or Maleficent or uh, Scar from The Lion King. I, 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 I just, he was more like a laughable villain, like this, his character seemed more uh, bombastic rather than villainous, which having, being, being bombastic and having bombastic tendencies isn't so terrible inherently if you want to, if you want to be a villain, but if that's your character style and that's who you are as a person and that's ingrained in the character's personality it's very hard to look at that character with actual seriousness uh, like silence most times speaks more volumes than just yelling and screaming and usually if you're just yelling and screaming your head off uh, you're not going to do anything about it and you're not going to do anything threatening honestly about the situation but and, and honestly the villain song was kind of a letdown like this is the thanks I get it, it did it, it, it didn't have the sheer power that Be Prepared had it, it didn't have uh, the magnitude or the giddiness that Gaston's song had it, it didn't it didn't really have it didn't really even have the um, 
catchy title or the catchy uh, melody that High Diddly D had in Pinocchio. So it's like this this song was more of a dull retreat in what other previous Disney songs were, but it's obvious that this movie is kind of a shallow replica of what Disney once was. Um, now when it comes to the I Want song, Asha's I Want song, voiced by Ariana DeBose, that was better. That was better. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty good. Uh, the voice casting again was good, but it's just the film doesn't seem like a whole film. I mean, yes, we got references to the Seven Dwarves. Yes, we have references to these Disney characters. Um, we had a Mary Poppins reference, a, a few Peter Pan references, which, by the way, if a spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> if you've seen the movie and you looked at the Peter Pan reference, you kind of realized that, oh, wow, this is pretty much just a slap to the face because it's like you had Peter Pan but you didn't bother to have anyone else in the film like Peter Pan was the only one invited to the Disney Centennial and that's why I said like Disney's short film like 100 years that was snubbed at the Oscars was a much better uh, Centennial and is a much better homage to the studio that made it it was so much better I, I i and honestly it was it was eons better than wish wish again like the like like the marvels and like barbie it could have been great but it just really didn't have the gun there was just nothing to it there was just not much to it like it just existed to say okay well we gotta do something for disney's 100th anniversary let's quickly write up a Disney movie and make a whole bunch of innocuous references to other Disney films that are very, very superior to this. It's like Disney knows it's living in its shadow. Disney knows that at this point, at least at this point in the game, 2023 and beyond, they know that they're past their prime like from 2023 and beyond they know that they're past their prime but it is so blatantly obvious that these these filmmakers i, I don't want to use the word factory filmmaking like that douchebag chris gore does <laughs> when he's talking about the disney remakes but this does seem like factory filmmaking and i only say that because it, it feels like it was really just rushed out and i don't say that about the disney remakes because i mean yeah sure disney is going to make movies based on how well it's going to perform and how well it's going to do at the box office because they're a company and you know their one primary goal of any company is to make money and i'm not knocking them for that but unlike the live action disney remakes wish is really just i i mean i don't even know if i can call it a movie like it's not because it's not really an original disney movie because it, co it tries to copy off other disney films and try to pay homage to other disney films but it does it terribly and it's not a remake because it's the first of its kind. So watching this movie almost seems like watching a Frankenstein of a film that was made with different parts. And then when it finally came to life, it was this strange phenomenon that we weren't prepared for and we did not like. So that's my piece on Wish, but so, so in, all, in, all, in all honesty, I'm probably going to give this a 4 out of 10, uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comments.